Hey everyone, welcome to Calculus and Vectors. So this is actually my first time teaching the course and uh, I was a little bit apprehensive but my wonderful colleague has given me these lessons and so I'm just putting a voice to those lessons. A lot of schools end up doing vectors first and then calculus second so that's what we're going to do. Lesson 1.1 vector concepts. Before I talk to you about what a vector is I actually want to go through what a scalar is. So a scalar is a quantity that has some sort of magnitude to it. Length, mass, time, like any of these things are associated with an amount. A vector on the other hand talks about an amount, like a magnitude, but then has an extra element to it, which is direction. So let's give you a very quick example. Speed is a scalar. It's an amount of kilometers per hour. Now if you take the speed and you add a direction, like say going towards the east, then it's no longer called speed, it's now called velocity, which is a type of vector. Now another vector that you'll probably see quite often in this course is the force of gravity. It has a magnitude of 9.8 meters per second squared, but there's also a direction to it, which is going downwards. Or I guess if you wanted to be a little bit more like specific, uh, going towards the core of the earth. Okay, so how do we see these vectors? Like, what do they look like? Geometric vectors can be shown through a diagram. So if I show you going from A towards B, it's easy to draw the direction. All you do is you just draw a line and then you represent it with an arrow. Okay, so clearly you're going from A to B. The magnitude depends on how long the arrow is. So the longer the arrow, the larger the magnitude and vice versa. Vectors don't have to be just shown in diagram. They can be shown as like letters. And so if I wanted to call the vector something, I could always use a little letter or a lower case with something called a half arrow or I guess a line with a hook on top of it. I could always call like, let's say this above diagram vector u. Okay, so you can use any letter you want, it's up to you. If you want to use two letters to denote um, your, like to name your vector, you can always call it A and B, but if you use two letters, you're gonna use uppercase letters. Okay, so you would start with the letter that your arrow started off with and end with the letter where your arrow ended. Don't forget to put your vector symbol. Also notice that if I decided to go the other way and call it BA, it wouldn't represent the arrow that is drawn above, mainly because this says that I'm starting at B, but I'm going towards A. So this wouldn't really work. In fact, it's going the opposite way, which is opposite vectors, and we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, so in textbooks, I've seen like bold face or bold font um, little letters before to also represent vectors, they don't have that arrow on top. So just if you come across it, you know what it is. The last one that I'm going to go through in this video is called algebraic vectors. So algebraic vectors kind of look like a coordinate. So a coordinate or a point usually has like a letter in front to kind of name it. So point A looks like it might be here. If I talk about, say, vector A, well, I kind of need another point. And so they do it in respect to um, the origin. So any coordinate can be, I guess, written as a vector, as long as it's with respect to the origin. Um, and we call those position vectors, but I'll get into that a little bit later. Okay, so it'll look like that from the origin towards A, mainly because you're going three this way as your X value, and then four that way as your Y value. And coincidentally enough, it's actually written exactly the same way. So it can be written with round brackets um, and normal numbers and a comma. Okay, so moving on. Parallel vectors, equal vectors, and opposite vectors. This is how we compare vectors. Okay, so a parallel vector, um, I have u, like vector u up there, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a parallel vector. So obviously, I'm going to draw something that is parallel. Hey, that's pretty good for a vector without a ruler. <laughs> Guys, use a ruler. Do as I say and not as I do. <laughs> okay, 
So those two right there are going to be written as vector u is parallel to vector v. Notice that um, as long as they have the same slope, it really doesn't matter if they're going in opposite directions. It doesn't matter if they're going in the same direction or even that they're different lengths or magnitudes as long as they're parallel. Okay. So equal vectors. Equal vectors would be what you would think. They would be the same vector. Okay, and when I say the same vector, I mean they have the same slope, they have the same magnitude, and they have the same direction. So I'll write it just like that. Opposite vectors are pretty much like equal vectors. The only difference is that they're going in the opposite direction. Okay, so I'll write it like this. Okay, so V and U look like they're the same magnitude. They have the same slope, so they are parallel, but one's going in the opposite direction of the other. We can write it like this, opposite direction. So we write that opposite direction with a negative. Let's practice this now. Okay, so example number one. Given parallelogram ABCD, where E is the intersection of the two diagonals, name some equal vectors, parallel vectors, and opposite vectors. So I'm going to name a couple just so that you guys get the hang of it, but obviously there's like a whole bunch more that I'm not going to write down. Let's start off with equal vectors. Okay, so equal vectors, let's see, this vector AB looks like it's pretty equal to DC. Remember, the order of the letters matters, so DC, not CD. Okay, they look like they're equal because, well, um, they're the same length, so the same magnitude, same direction, same slope, and so I'm going to write them as the same, equals to DC. Oh, here's another one. How about AE and EC? Okay, so those are probably equal as well. Let's start off, not start off, let's continue. It's been a long day with parallel vectors. Okay, so parallel vectors, wait, aren't the first two parallel? The first two red ones, like AB is parallel to DC. Awesome. Okay, and um, oh, oh, here's a different one. How about AE is parallel to AC? Okay, they're going in the same direction. Technically, they're also parallel. Okay, they're not the same length. All right. How about some opposite vectors? Okay, which ones are going in opposite directions? Um, how about this one? Okay, so DA is equal to CB, but the opposite direction. So how do we say that? We're going to say opposite of C, B. Okay, so I don't know if I said that right the first time. Let's try that again. Uh, D, A, and C, B are equal vectors. Did I write that right? No, I didn't. Ooh, okay. Let's try that one more time. Okay, so D, A is equal to the opposite of B, C. I think I wrote that right this time. Is that right? DA is equal to CB, which is equal to the negative of BC. Yes, I got it. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, finding angles in between the vectors. Well, the vectors aren't touching, so how do we find the angle in between them? What you got to do is you got to put them touching. Like You got to make them touch. And they have to touch in a specific way, so they're only allowed to touch from tail to tail, and that's how you would calculate the angle in between them. So I already have vector u and vector v drawn, um, but you would have to redraw them exactly the same, but touching. Okay? So you need the same slope, same magnitude and direction. I'm just going to be lazy and take this and move it here. This is my redrawing, guys. Ta-da! They are now touching tail to tail. So the angle would be found right in between. Okay, let's try an example. Okay, rectangle ABCD has side lengths AB, which is 6 centimeters, and BC, which is 4 centimeters. Determine the angle between vector AB 
and vector AC. Okay, so the angle in between is right here to one decimal place. All right, in order to calculate that, um, you kind of can go back to previous math skills. And so this really looks like a right angle triangle to me. And I'm going to do what I, I love to do, which is some trig. So tan theta is opposite over my adjacent. And then tan inverse, and if I calculate that, approximately 33.7 degrees. All right, so a couple more concepts that I want to go over before the end of this video. Number seven, scalar multiplication. Um, what I want to tell you in this section is that uh, I guess two vectors are the same, not the same, um, parallel if they are scalar multiples of each other. So let me explain. A, B, in this case, vector A, B, is the same as two, let's just say, A, M's. Okay, because if you think about it, this whole thing is the same as having two of these because M is in the middle. It says in the question that it's the midpoint. Now, if I wanted to represent it as a magnitude, well, you can't represent it with just this, okay? Because that just represents both the magnitude and the direction, it's a vector, right? So how do we represent just the magnitude? You put absolute symbols around it, okay? So that's now talking about the length of AB. And how would I change it? Because now the other side doesn't make sense. The length of AB is equal to two times the length of AM. Okay, so remember, absolute symbols denotes magnitude. Okay, and actually that makes sense. Like if you think about it, over here, this is probably what, like 10 blocks is equal to two times five blocks. Okay, so there's a bunch of other ones written below. And you know what, I'll go over maybe two of them, but you can kind of go through the rest and see if you understand. Okay, so let's try one of them. Um, AB, so this guy right here, is equal to two AMs, which we said before. Why don't we do the next one? Two MBs, two of these guys. Yeah, that makes sense, because if you took one of them, let's see if I can, nope. Let's see if I can, oh, they come together, dang. If I can take both of them and actually put them so, like along each other, you would actually see can I do that? I might be able to do that. Let's grab my mouse. Where's my mouse? Oh, yeah. Okay, there we go. Do you see it? Oh, where'd my tip go? There you go. Okay, so, oh, the tip is still there. Duh. Oh, this has been such a long night. Okay, so 2MBs is equal to 1AB. Okay, let's look at another one. Let's look at a hard one. Half of AB, all right, half of AB might be something like this, halfway, is equal to negative half BA. So BA will go this way, but you don't want to do that. You want to do half of it. So that's negative a half. No, that's just BA. And then negative one half would be going this way. So those are equal. And I agree. Okay, so generally the rule is if you have two vectors, u and v, they're going to be parallel if and only if your vector u is a scalar multiple. So this represents any number uh, times your other vector. Okay, so for example, u can be, I don't know, five times your other vector and they're going to be parallel to each other. Okay, or you can be a lot of shorter. I didn't say that right. You can be a lot shorter. There we go. Okay, like one quarter of vector v, and so on. Okay, finishing off with unit vectors and zero vectors. A unit vector is represented by a with a little vector, like a hat. Okay, and we'll just call reference vectors um, the regular vector symbol. So if I wanted to draw this, I would go, okay, a unit vector is only one unit. This is called A with the hat. If I really wanted to write the magnitude of it, I'd put the absolute signs and tell you that it is one in length. Let's just pretend that we have another vector 
and we'll call this our reference vector. If I wanted to tell you the scalar, I think that's about nine blocks, so the scalar would be nine units. Now how exactly would I write that? Well, let's see if you can follow this. Okay, and I'll try to do this in color so that you can kind of, you can follow along. All right, the reference vector is equal to, okay, whoops, nine times the unit vector. So nine units, because each unit is one. And so the blue will be nine times each of the ones. Now, if I wanted to say, um, isolate just the green one, okay, so unit vector by itself, wouldn't I bring nine to the other side and it'd be a divide? So I'm gonna write that as one over nine and that would be multiplying your reference vector. Okay, so you can kind of see that this guy is an example of this rule right here. Okay, reference vector is basically the scalar um, amount of the reference angle, sorry, reference vector timesing the, um, the unit vector. Okay, and this guy is an example of this unit vector, which is the reference vector, but multiplying one over the magnitude of the reference vector. Lastly, zero vectors. I mean, they seem kind of strange, but in theory, they actually do exist. A zero vector has a magnitude of nothing. Okay, I know that's kind of weird, because if you think about it, it's like, well, how do you even draw that? Like, what does that even look like? What direction is that? Uh, the direction is actually indeterminate, and you, you wouldn't draw it because you couldn't. Okay, but they do exist, and I just wanted to mention it. So I think we should probably stop there. That's quite a bit for one lesson already. Thank you so much for um, joining me on this interesting journey for the next little while. <laughs>